Today we'll be focusing on fair resonance in power systems. Uh, fair resonance versus resonance. Well, we need to understand this before we take a deep dive into the technical aspect of fair resonance. So the main difference is uh, there's really two. One, it's nonlinear. Fair resonance has uh, it does have a linear component, but it also has a knee and saturation component, which we'll see in a few minutes. And that comes from the BH characteristic curve of the transformer itself. Um, and it also has no definite resonating frequency. And what that means is, is it has no one set frequency that satisfies the equation omega L equals one over omega C, which is the equation for resonance to occur. And this is also because of the uh, nonlinear characteristics of the transformer. And we'll take a deep dive into that in just a few seconds. Um, Kruger, which is an author that I'll be citing multiple times in this presentation, states that there are five main reasons or requirements for fair resonance to occur. First is a saturable inductor. That's the iron core of the transformer. Number two is system capacitance. In our case, it'll be underground cable. Number three is a voltage source. Obviously, all power systems have a voltage source, uh, whether it's the transformer or the generator, whichever one you want to uh, take Azure voltage source. You could take either or uh, when analyzing. Number four is a, a low transformer losses and five is multiple solutions and the multiple solutions is referring to the KVL equation um, and that comes from the varying, varying inductance of the transformer. That's why there's multiple solutions. The inductance could be different values and we'll see that in just a few seconds. Occurrences. So where does fair resonance occur? Obviously we said power systems. Uh, most of the time it's 25 kV or higher. Uh, it has been known to happen in 12 kV systems as low as that, uh, but this, the scenario has to be just right for that to happen. Um, and usually it applies uh, with a three phase pad mount transformer that's fed from a long underground cable. And if it's single or two phased, uh, when it's supposed to have three phases of power, that's where fair resonance can occur. And this might be due to switching or it might be to, due to a fault happening in the uh, a fault device clearing it. So uh, we'll talk about at the very end ways that power system analysis um, engineers try to avoid fair resonance. And the main cause of it is the magnetic flux of the transformer doesn't care, uh, cancel out when one of the phases is dropped. That causes a varying form of inductance. So. Here's a field study that happened in the Kingsport, Tennessee area. Um, you can see that this line is 34.5 kV. So it's above that 25 uh, kV threshold where fair resonance can start happening. 1.4 miles of underground cable. So a lot of capacitance on this line and it's only one lightly loaded customer on the top of a mountain. So uh, it fits all criteria for fair resonance to occur. And what happened in this scenario is two hydraulic reclosers um, that were located at the tap, so where the, it first went underground, uh, got blown off the pole. And we'll see why in just a few minutes. So here's some disadvantages of fair resonance. First, we have overheating. Um, obviously, when stuff is going over voltage and over current, it will cause it to overheat. Reduced equipment lifespan, same thing as I just said, the over voltage and over current can go over the threshold of equipment. And then arrestor failures. Obviously, um, the arrestors on transformers are to combat lightning. So lightning has over voltage and over current, uh, which res fair resonance meets both of those criteria. So the arrestors could fail thinking that it was a lightning strike. And um, the transformer itself, uh, it could explode because of the oil inside the transformer heating up. Um, so there's, there's lots of bad reasons uh, that fair resonance can affect your system. And EPRI states, which is the um, Electric Power Research Institute, states that unchecked voltages can exceed 400% of the nominal line to ground voltage. So it's not just a little bit of over voltage, it's, it's a lot per unit of over voltage that the system can experience. Other small um, disadvantages are flicker. Um, charring of paint was an interesting one and loud noise. Uh, transformers have actually been known to start shaking violently uh, when they're under a fair resonance state. Uh, here's that transformer saturation curve that I was talking about earlier. So you can see that there's a knee region, which is in between the linear region and the saturation region. And ideally, the transformer works in the linear region. The, sat the transformer does not like working uh, in the saturation region, and we'll see that in just a few seconds. 
Um, but ideally, the transformer would only have a linear region. But due to flux leakage and the actual real losses of the transformer, uh, it creates this asymptotic curve. And that will be the basis of our fair resonance analysis. Because it is a nonlinear phenomena, um, the, the mathematical principles are a bit difficult to solve. But most of the mathematical analysis uh, is due to graphical solutions. And we'll see that next. So here's uh, the main analysis, like I just said. The, uh, the circuit we're going to analyze has low resistance, which we see in our um, lightly loaded transformer. So we don't even model the resistance in this uh, example. We have an inductor, which is in the form of a transformer, and the capacitance, which in this case will be our underground cable. Uh, and point one on the on this first graph is when the inductor voltage is greater than the capacitor voltage. Uh, this is considered a stable point, which is non-fair resonant um, because it's in the linear region. So we don't have to worry about if it's in this state. Um, point two is when the capacitor voltage is greater than the inductor voltage. This is also considered stable because it's away from the knee region, but it's a stable fair resonant state. So it is under fair resonance, but if it's in this state only, then it is considered stable. And point three is when the inductive and capacitive reactances are equal, uh, thus creating a highly low, a very, very low uh, impedance circuit. This is where our uh, voltages, over voltages and overcurrents are going to occur. However, um, this point doesn't actually reach um, fruition, I guess I could say. Uh, it will pass through this point, but it won't actually stay as an operating point. Points one and two are considered operating points. Point three um, is an operating point that will never be met. It will just pass through. Um, fair resonance occurs between points one and two. And when the system goes into a fair resonance state, there's a voltage that opposes the flow of current. And obviously, by Ohm's law, this doesn't work. So the current then flips uh, to the direction it's supposed to be flowing. And when it flips, it passes through that point three, which adds a current in the direction that the, flow, the current is not supposed to be flowing. So it's kind of this flip-flop effect. So it'll start in uh, operating point one, go to operating point two, and as it passes through operating point three, the current will shift. So there's this, op there's this bounce back and flip-flop between the operating points. And when a phase goes out, we'll talk about that in just a few seconds, um, the saturation region is entered so the transformer obviously the inductance changes into the saturation region and this could cause an almost instant change in the oper from operating point one to two and this is where the multiple solutions come in because you don't know what um, inductance that's going to happen at and uh, the, the voltage drop is another big thing here as far as the effects of fair resonance so at operating point one, the maximum voltage drop is across the inductor. So it's across the transformer. There's not really a lot to worry about. At operating point two, however, the maximum voltage drop is across the capacitance. And this is our line. So obviously an over voltage across the line creates an over current across the line by Ohm's law, which could negatively affect equipment on the line, downline equipment, as well as customer equipment on the secondary. So uh, the, the operating point two is the one that really causes the issues as far as rated thresholds go. And here's uh, the dropping phases, the effects of that. So on the left side, we have uh, phase A is open. And as you can see, it's about 1.5 per unit um, above, which is still a good amount. And when you open another phase, uh, as you can see in the second graph, it goes all the way up above two per unit. Uh, this is caused by the core being driven into saturation and obviously the flux is not canceling out. So uh, when one or two phases are open, it can create havoc on your system. And here we have some dependencies. So as we've discussed, it relies on voltage and capacitance, but at what cost? Um, the top left graph here shows as we increase and decrease voltage, you could see that the middle line is our starting voltage. And it's affected by all three operating points. And as we increase that voltage, it's only affected by one operating point. And that point is two. And as we said earlier, that's our stable fair resonance uh, point, operating point. But that's not good because we obviously just put our system into fair resonance. 
Um, and on the right, it shows the effect of capacitance on the line. And as you can see, the increase in capacitance um, actually causes fair resonance to not want to happen. Um, it eliminates the non-fair resonant, the, it eliminates the fair resonant stable, and you're left with just a stable state uh, at operating point two when you increase the capacitance. Uh, this also implies that for a given voltage source and a, a given BH transfer, uh, transformer curve, there is a range of capacitance at which fair resonance can occur. And we see that here in our equation. Uh, this was given by, uh, I think it, French at Beach. Um, I'll throw the references in at the end, but he gives this critical length of underground cable uh, and your KVA rated is your KVA rating for your transformer. Your I percent is the transformer magneti magnetizing current and your V rated is the voltage rating of your transformer. CCC is the core to core capacitance of the line and CCS is the core to, core to sheath capacitance of the line. So if you know all those values, which you should, uh, you can get the critical length of your underground cable. And once you reach that length, that critical length, uh, you're in the threshold for fair resonance to begin. And um, in continuing our discussion on voltages, EPRI provided the uh, bottom diagram. And you can see that on the 12 kV transformer, um, the intersection is only in operating point one there's not even it's not even near the knee so it's it doesn't even have an opportunity to really go from one to two it's just stuck in that uh, fair resonant stable um, but if there's no not another point operating point to go to you don't really have to worry about it whereas in 25 kv you can see that there are operating points at the knee and this is where fair resonance really starts to come into play And there's also different modes of fair resonance. So here's the fundamental node. You can see that the peaks of the voltages are distorted slightly, but there's only one driving frequency, and that's something to note. And that one driving frequency, um, the harmonics after that are going, or they're decreasing in magnitude. Uh, that's something to keep in mind as we look forward into the next one, which is subharmonic. And this one, you can see that the uh, the voltage is still periodic like it was in the previous fundamental mode, but the signal is a lot more distorted. And that's because of these harmonics here, and they happen every, um, the fundamental frequency divided by an integer. So in this case, the integer would be two, because instead of 50 hertz, it's happening at 25 hertz. And these studies were conducted in Spain, that's why the 50 hertz is used. Next, we have chaotic mode. And as you can see, this this fits the name. Uh, we have pure chaos in the graph, the voltage graph. But the good news is, is it only happens um, under highly unrealistic scenarios. And there's been no reports for this to happen in ultra high voltage substations. So this is kind of like a, it, it's not really planned to happen type of thing, but it does exist in unforeseen circumstances. The last one we have here is the quasi periodic mode. And it has an incoherence looking at the frequency spectrum. And what I mean by that is the frequencies jump around uh, and in the subharmonic, they were all, uh, the harmonics came every uh, division of the fundamental frequency. With this one, there is no, um, no certain number. And studies have found that the quasi periodic modes were possible in voltage transformers at a reasonable um, scenario. So they are possible, but not common. And that's where we see here the fundamental and some harmonic modes are the most common. And according to Kruger, um, the the system picks which one it wants to go with uh, depending on the saturation frequency. So if the saturation frequency is greater than the source frequency, the fundamental mode will occur. If the saturation frequency is less than the source frequency, the subharmonic mode will occur. And that, that kind of goes back to the um, fundamental node being divided by an integer. Uh, if it's higher, then it's going to stick with that fundamental mode. If it's lower, then it will go into the subharmonic mode. And um, the saturation period here is, you can see it, it does depend on the saturation flux and the initial capacitor charge. So 
uh, those values will then turn into your uh, fundamental, no, your, excuse me, your saturation frequency that we talked about a few seconds ago. And here's all my references. Uh, good, thank you. Big thank you to Mr. Tim Bremer at Appalachian Power who supplied me with a lot of this um, material.